All right. So as I said, today we're going to be talking about my home built cockpit. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I want to share this with you guys. First off is just because I think it's cool. And if you're on my channel, then you're a flight sim geek, just like me. And uh, second reason is because I'm sure there are many of you who thought about doing it and decided not to for whatever reasons or the other. And uh, so today I'm just going to show you what I've done and uh, how I put it together and, uh, you know, and see what you guys think and any tips and tricks and just, you know, sharing the, uh, the simulation geekness around. Now, one of the things I want to make very, very clear as we get started in this, I am not uh, a woodworker by any means. Um, and you guys are going to find that out as we dive in deeper here. But I do want to walk you guys sort of through how I did it all, the materials I use. It's primarily just a couple of two by threes, maybe a little bit of one and a half squares and um, some plywood, uh, three quarter inch plywood. Um, is the bulk of it. So the really cool thing is, is we're going to sort of just work our way around from the side. Now, one of the things that obviously that really spawned it is when I got the Verpal products. The Verpal products are so nice and they're so smooth and they're such high quality. I really wanted something really good to complement them. Now, um, they come with some really great stands and mounts that uh, Verpal has as an option. But again, I wanted something much more sleek, much more um, cockpit looking, if you will. Um, so all I've done here, this is just a very simple pedestal, um, that, uh, you know, I made from again, some two by fours, some one and a half squares, um, and then just the three quarter inch plywood on top. Now, the reason why they're spread out like this is if you get to the mounting system, let me get the camera up under here. What I've done is created a platform for the throttle and the stick to sit on. Now, the reason why I used these very long screws that are up here, let's see if I can get my hand under there. There we go. Um, is because it's, I made this like this, that way I can adjust it. I can actually adjust the elevation up and down. I just used an easy router. I don't know how well we can see under there. Probably not very well. Um, but I, I just cut a quick groove out for the uh, connectors, uh, the USB cables to plug into. Um, and then just using the nuts on top or the bolts on top with the washer and washer nut on the bottom, I can lift and raise it, um, as easy as I want. Then I used a quarter inch, uh, just window sill or window ceiling, um, foam to go around the layers of all the devices on the cockpit in order to, uh, give it that, uh, compressed look. Now this wasn't necessarily meant for cosmetic beauty, if you will. Um, we're going to be doing something a little bit differently. So we're going to leave the, the, the foam here, but then what we're going to do is we're going to um, put some trim over the edges of all of this to cover the foam and just make it look a lot, lot nicer and clean it up. We're going to paint the bolt heads and everything black as well so it sort of blends in with the rest of the cockpit. Now, if we move forward to the wind wing panels, so I've got the wind wing takeoff panel and the wing wing uh, combat panel. These were a little bit trickier because I didn't want to mount them permanently. You know, if I ever decide to upgrade it or move to a different panel, um, you know, I wanted to be able to pull them out easily. So I'm going to try again to get the camera back behind here. Let's see if I can do that. I don't think that's coming off. There we go. Maybe that's a little bit better. Um, but the idea that we did here was just to have sort of a cradle for these to sit in. Okay. Oh, come on camera. There we go. Sorry guys. I'm new to the whole GoPro experience. This is the GoPro hero 10 and I haven't, uh, haven't used one before much less as a webcam. Um, but uh, I got tired of using my cell phones. I couldn't record live. Um, so anyway, they just sit in there. I can pull them out if I want to. Um, and that's why I use the, a little bit thicker foam, like on the takeoff panel. And again, if you look real closely, you can see how crappy my cutting skills are. Um, I did this with a jigsaw. Um, I didn't have fancy tools or anything like that. I've got a cheap, uh, Ryobi table saw, nine inch band saw. Let's see. The table saw is a 10 inch table saw. Did nine inch band saw and a two and a half amp, I think, um, router that I got from Ryobi. And then I have a black and Decker jigsaw that I did all this with. And to you who are badasses with wood, please don't judge me. <laughs> I just wanted to get into something cool and do it myself. I'm very self-reliant and dependent. Um, but again, to show you guys that, you know, anybody can do this. And, and it definitely has changed the simulation experience for me. We'll talk about that and do a little bit of a demo later on towards the end of the video. 
Um, but so I've got the takeoff and the combat panels just sort of resting in there. Um, now you have to really push to get them move around. Like if I move things, if I, uh, you know, I'm so I've taken off, gear up, okay, you know, uh, master arm. You know, even the jettison, you have to really push that jettison button hard. It doesn't really move anything around. It works really nice. And and you can't feel it, even though it does have a little bit of wiggle, you don't notice it unless you're really looking for it, um, being hypercritical. Now with these, so first let's talk about the tablet. The tablet is just literally, it's all it is. It's a 10 inch Android tablet. Um, I have it Velcroed in there. That way I can pull it out and charge it. I initially was gonna do a router cutout here and let the charger cable come in from the back and just plug in. But uh, this is actually the third of my uh, forward control panels. And uh, one of my my uh, curses, if you will, is I don't do well drawing things on paper and saying, yep, this is what I'm gonna want, right? Um, it's sort of, as I see it, is when I realize, oh, I don't like that, and it happened a couple of times. Um, so some of you who are more experienced and wiser than me can probably figure out much better ways to do this so you don't waste a bunch of wood. And then we're gonna talk about the cost of all of this later on here towards the end of the video. Here we've got um, a really cool, so these are just the Thrustmaster Cougar MFDs. And then these are displays that I got uh, off of Etsy that are designed, he's got, he's got a full um, casing uh, that goes with the uh, flat screens that are behind here. Uh, there's a gentleman on Etsy who sells these and they're fully compatible. The bolt holes are already re ready for the Cougar MFDs. And I'm going to show you guys those later on and we're going to do a full review and they're absolutely fantastic. Uh, a bit expensive, not going to lie. Uh, they are a bit on the pricey side, uh, but they work really, really well. Um, and they're very, very easy to set up. That's the other nice thing about it. So we've got the left and the right MFD. These are super awesome. You guys will see these in action. These are primarily uh, advantageous for DCS World. Um, Microsoft Flight Simulator now, however, you can use the screen for whatever you want. Obviously, that's literally all it is, just a monitor. So you can put whatever you want there. What comes really handy for Microsoft Flight Simulator is this guy. This guy here is a touchscreen. And uh, it's just a little seven inch touchscreen. Um, and this thing is awesome. So for things like Sky for Sim Pad, uh, Navigraph, heck, the other day, just testing around, I actually put OBS on here. That way I could do my stop and start recordings very, very easily. Uh, and uh, keep things nice and smooth. But this thing is super awesome um, for any of your pop-out screens from Microsoft Flight Simulator, SPAD.next, if you're messing around with your controls. Uh, there's a really cool application that I actually really like this on. I wish I could show it to you guys, but uh, I'm under NDA at the moment. I can't show you guys until it's released. Um, but uh, that's another. there is another option that would go here. But like I said, the Skyforce SIM pad works great on this. I open it up on a browser and then just drag that browser window over to this screen. And, you know, if you guys have, don't know what Sky for SIM is or Sky for SIM pad is, uh, it's an application from, it's basically an electronic kneeboard for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, make sure you guys check it out. I did a video on it just uh, five or six videos back. So if you just go to my channel, it should be relatively easy to find. <clears throat> But uh, um, I can navigate the windows very, very easily and then maintain control of the flight controls everywhere else. Um, and then, of course, we have our flight stick here. This is, again, the Verpal MC3 base uh, with the Mongoose uh, flight stick. This thing's absolutely freaking awesome. Now, the pedestals are just he held here by the weight of uh, the um, gosh forward control panel, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, now, the reason why I did that is exactly what I'm already debating. My flight stick is a little further back when I'm in the flight position that I like. Nothing un too ridiculous or uncomfortable, but it's enough where um, I've definitely noticed it. So what I think I'm gonna do is, is cut another inch or so out, and that'll allow me to push the pedestals forward, which again, will move the stick forward. And I can do the same thing over here on the throttle side of the fence. I'm sorry, guys, I'm, I am so terrible at this camera work. I'm awful at it. Moving to the top here is very, very simple. It's just a nice uh, flat base, but I've got my class echo. Many of you guys have asked before. Oh, here, just realized it's off. There we go. Here is the class echo. I have talked about this before many, many times in a lot of my flight simulator videos, specifically relating to Microsoft Flight Simulator. It unfortunately does not function with DCS World. Gosh, I wish it would. Um, I've begged and begged the developer, but, uh, and I'll continue to beg. Eventually, you know, we, we, might, we might be at retirement age, but eventually I'll win. I'm positive of it. 
Uh, this thing is absolutely fantastic. I can't really show you anything yet. Um, and there's a few reasons why, um, because I'm messing around with something else. Uh, but the class echo, this allows me to control uh, the flight controls, gives me readout, engine performance, attitude indicator if I want, autopilot controls, radios, lights, you name it, electric. It's got even the sim rate. It, this is actually a touch screen as well. Oh, there you go. Here, here we go. Let's just zoom in on a second while we're here. So again, nothing's configured because I don't have an aircraft started, but like you go to the autopilot window. There's all your autopilot controls, comm and nav. Controls, this is the one that's, uh, yeah, it's not going to display because I don't have a uh, profile loaded up. But controls, this would have things like your parking brake, batteries, uh, starter, uh, fuel pumps, uh, fuel tanks, things like that. If we go to systems, this is probably one of the things. Oh, never mind. So there's your ignitions, pump one, pump two. There's your tanks. I'm sorry. So that's under systems. I was thinking of, you know, I got to remember what controls are for. Um, I don't know that I use controls very often. One of the things I use most common is to go to systems and I use the sim rate very, very often here. Um, and I'll increase the sim rates when I'm in cruise in between recording shots. All right. Very, very cool tool, guys. This again, if you just Google um, Shake Print Class Echo, uh, you'll find it. It is an absolutely awesome tool. And again, you can see the size comparison. Not very big. Very, very easy. I've got it screwed to the top of my desk mount here. Um, and then, of course, I have my PS3 eye camera that I use for the track IR. Um, and then we've got three uh, 28 inch um, Asus monitors. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it because I also have that big guy over there, the 49 inch Samsung G9 Odyssey, 144 hertz, um, 5120 by what, was it, what is it? Whatever it is, 2144 or whatever the heck the resolution is. Anyway, I digress. Now, one of the cool things that to show you guys that something that I can show you on the tablet, it's kind of fun. Is like for DCS World. So if you're flying the Hornet, for example, I use this quite often. There's the UFC um, and it does illuminate and gives me everything that you see in the cockpit here. This is a really cool app. It's an Android app. Um, I obviously don't have anything to show you at the moment because DCS isn't fired up. We'll get there. Um, I do want to show you guys, but uh, yeah, the FE panel, you have some lights and electrical panels, really, really cool tool or another one that he's got is if we go over here is DCS now. Now this probably, oh, I'm surprised it even loaded. So you can see right now it does a full globe, but when we're actually loaded into the sim, say I'm in, um, Say I'm in uh, the Caucasus map, right? So it'll actually take me over to Georgia. Um, let's see here. Would that be right in there, right? Yep. There we go. Hey, yo, for geometry class or geometry, <laughs> geography class. Um, so there's Georgia, for example. This is one of the prime regions of um, DCS world in the Caucasus map. Okay. Uh, like there's Kobaletti there. And then we move all the way up here. There's Sukumi. So it will actually show you, depending on what the server settings are, you'll, I think you'll always get at least your own aircraft here, but like if your server isn't uh, restricted, it can show you all the different aircraft in the air or even just the fog of war aircraft. So your own allies, really cool tool. Now the drag is that you can only have one or the other application open. That is one of the drags there. And then underneath, we simply got my TPR rudder pedals. We've got the USB controllers on the right. And the, or USB hubs on the right and then down there on the left. Now we're going to do side paneling for all of these. Uh, we're going to have them all blocked up and I'm going to use uh, magnetic tape to install them. That way if I need to remove them and because I'm going to use these uh, panels for cable management. And that way if I ever need to remove them, I just pop them right off and it'll be simple and easy. Now there's one more thing that I want to show you guys um, that I actually moved on accident. So give me just a second here. Oof. And that is this guy. So this is just a cheap $13, I think it was, uh, wireless keyboard. Now, let's see here, let's turn the lights off. I haven't figured out how to just set a single color on this damn thing, so I just turned the RGB off. But when I turn it on, it works perfectly well. The touchscreen works. I can type on anything, like for DCS World, for example, you have all of your function buttons, the F3 button or the F buttons. Um, so you can change your different camera views, respond to radio controls, all kinds of stuff. And it fits very, very nicely. It's just Velcro. And if I need to, for any reason, just pop it off and we're good to go. 
But uh, again, that was an $11 part, I think it was. It was very cheap, all things considered. Um, and it works really well. It works really well. It's got just a standard um, USB input device that, uh, or as a receiver, and just really kicks some tail. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and fire up DCS World, guys, so you guys can see uh, the uh, simulation in its pride and, and joy, if, if you will. Um, I do think that this absolutely shines in DCS the most. Um, but uh, we'll do a little bit of Microsoft Flight Simulator so you guys can see some of the cooler parts of that. Okay, so you guys are going to have to kind of forgive me. It's going to be really choppy. I have all three screens running, as you guys can see. Uh, I don't normally have all three screens running when I am recording. Normally, I'm just using one, and these are 4K uh, screens as well. So it's going to be a bit laggy uh, because we are recording at the same time. But I wanted to show you guys the coolness of it. So first off, to anybody who does a recording, take a look at this. This is actually a remote control for OBS. Just Google OBS remote control. Um, and you can use it on like a tablet, which is what I'm doing here. Or you can, you know, put it on your cell phone. Anything that's a wireless device that can connect to your computer that's actually managing the recording. But while we're doing that, let's see here. I'm hopefully I'm not bogging anything down too much. Let's go to the UFC here. Show you guys some of the cool stuff and how this works. So first off, we can go to autopilot. I hope you guys can see this on the camera. It's actually populating attitude hold, heading select, bar barometric altitude. Lock that in there. Barometric altitude comes on. Here on our MFDs, we can see the FLIR pod. There's our targeting pod. I know, again, it may not be the clearest of views, but I can very easily manipulate anything that I want to very quickly. So now it's following the uh, vertical velocity indicator. And I can set a target area very, very quickly. Let's see here. Let's say this building over here was a simulated target. We're not going to release any ordinance on the innocent here, but okay. So there we've got our target selected. And then from here, I can very easily control it. And even though I have it up here on the monitor, believe it or not, it is easier to see over here. Um, and uh, it also depends on what kind of view you want to use. I can actually move the camera up if I wanted to. Showing the keyboard off here, that little keyboard. If I turn my system on here, oh, you know what? I have it unplugged, I'm sorry, my fault. But I would very easily be able to switch over to like the uh, flyby view if I wanted. But it is a really, really slick uh, setup. I'm really, really enjoying this. Um, and again, any kind of other information if I wanted to, like if I had a text pad with maybe target information, I would put it over here and I could scroll through, you know, and still be able to access everything in regard to my controls. Um, even while I've touched the touchpad, I can still manipulate my controls here, select my different waypoints, box my waypoints, control everything. I can do the couple on the autopilot and I have the autopilot fly it for me. It's just, there's so many cool things about this, guys. I've really, really had a great time setting this up. It's been a ton of fun. Um, let me, I can't activate the barometric altitude hold because my angle is too far off. There we go. Now the aircraft's gonna maintain altitude for me and fly to my next waypoint all on its own. Um, makes everything so nice. It feels so cool messing around with all the buttons. It, it's such a completely different experience than what you would see in uh you know just standard desktop operation um i can't stress it enough guys i can't stress enough if you guys have ever thought about doing this do it the entire setup here um if you're not counting any of the displays or anything like that just the build of the cockpit just the wood and materials for it um had i not wasted as much as i did uh would have been in the general region of right around 300 dollars. when a professional cockpit uh you're just starting at about a thousand dollars for a good one for a decent one that's modular and has a bunch of different controls now we're still gonna be doing quite a bit of different things with this particular setup i fully plan to get the verbal collective and what i'm going to do there and that's why i made it so the throttle can move up and down is i'm going to actually lower the throttle down and then i'll mount the collective uh, base behind it and when i lower the throttle down i'll have access to the uh, collective handle i can put the grip on it and boom we're good to go and i'll still maintain this for the cyclic um, so it's going to be really, really awesome. I've really enjoyed building this. Um, and again, the, the, the 
expansion ideas that I have are almost endless. I mean, I've got so many cool ideas. We're going to put some trim up on top. We're going to put an LED strip on here to give it that floodlight look. Uh, maybe put a couple of desk or uh, book readers on the sides where it actually gives you like a chart. Maybe use this as a chart board down here for the, the front knee panel. There's a tons of different things that we can do to set this all up. And it just, it's been a really great time putting it all together. And I just wanted to share it with you guys. Um, I'm not going to worry about showing Microsoft Flight Simulator today, guys. Uh, it's the same principle. Like I said, um, having access to all these different tools. Um, one of the things that I would probably use in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I don't even know if I actually have it set up on the tablet right now, but is, um, well, so for example, here's Sky for SimPad, right? That we talked about earlier oh it's not running <laughs> so that would make it a little difficult to connect to it but i have sky for simpad either up here or the um uh, some touch screen buttons that i can implement here on the uh touchpad uh, application that's available for microsoft flight simulator again i've showed that one off on the channel as well typically i'll have sky for simpad over here buttons and controls over here my class echo up here um, again, there's something really cool with the class echo that I want to talk about, but I can't yet. Um, I'm like begging. We're, we're almost there. I'm almost at a point where I can talk about it. Um, but there's some really cool stuff coming down the road. It's going to make this even better for Microsoft flight simulator as well. Any of the pop-out screens that we want to use, uh, we'll be able to drag down to any of these displays here. Again, the OSBs for the MFDs don't really, I can't really see myself using them in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, hey, you know what I could show you guys? That'd be kind of cool. Let me see if it's on here. I think I have it on here. I don't think I just used it on my phone. Uh, oh, I think that was it right there. Oh, damn it, it's another web-based. Let's see if it'll even connect. I don't think it will. But like the Flyby Wire CDU or the, um, in this case, this is the Fergo CDU for the PMDG 737. Again, it's not gonna load. I don't have it running, so shame on me. Uh, but uh, I've had my CDUs up here, so it makes it real easy to enter in your waypoints, all that good jazz. We're gonna be doing a lot of fun stuff with this. I'm probably gonna keep the GoPro going and make it a part of the cockpit, and so that way you guys can see a lot more of this action when we're actually flying around. I think that'd be kind of fun for you guys. Let me know what you guys think below if you'd like to see the cockpit view uh, in the future, in future videos, um, there we go. Let's, let's turn it around. Have us go to a different waypoint. What's waypoint three. Um, uh, actually, I don't know if I have a waypoint three. I don't think I do. Um, but, uh, anyways, I really hope that you guys enjoyed the build. It was frustrating as hell at times. Um, again, I, I was not a professional think, uh, big shout out to my dad. He came and helped me quite a bit. He's much better with woodworking than I am. Uh, but I did most of this without his assistance. So that's why it looks the way it does. Um, but uh, anyway, it was it was a ton of fun. I highly recommend you guys give it a shot. Um, do some cardboard mock-ups of your displays. Uh, my dad mentioned that after I'd already put all this together. I wish I had done that. Just take a piece of cardboard, draw out your spacings for your displays and stuff. That way you can get a visual, physical representation in front of you and design it. Um, and then go for it, guys, because it's so cool. Um, it really doesn't take up as much space as you think. This is actually a pretty small room. This is uh, actually just a, um, uh, what's the word? Look at den. It, that's part of my house is what I use for my office. Um, and it has really changed the flight experience. I'm still getting used to it. I'm still getting things going here. We've got a couple other things that we're going to be putting in here. We've got the butt kicker that we're going to be adding. Um, and I'm going to be doing a review on that. The butt kicker is pretty cool. Um, and then uh, a few other things that we're going to discuss as time goes on. Um, I've got a USB adapter that allows you to use real world pilot headsets, um, to, uh, use as your, your comms and your, your earphones. Um, so we're going to be testing that out and seeing, does it really change much in the experience or is it just one of those cool things to have? Yeah, I know you can't reach that. That would make sense. Um, but, uh, anyways, it's, it's very nice having everything right at your fingertips. It's significantly a lot faster and obviously greatly enhances the immersion of not having to pick up the mouse, uh, especially for DCS world. I almost never have to pick up the mouse. Now, uh, I'm going to have all this stuff ready and at the, at the go. Um, I can very easily adjust my, my weapons and my settings there without having to worry about picking up the mouse and clicking in anything. I'll be able to use, uh, enter coordinates via the, uh, the UFC up on the tablet display. Just a really, really fun time. It's been really, really exciting to build it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know I've already said that. Um, but as always, guys, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.